I had no idea just how bad it is getting T-boned in a Tahoe. If you can get over the fact that that thing flipped just like the car market itself, here's something else that may tell you no. Consumer Reports gave this thing a 50 out of 100 overall and a 29 out of 100 for predicted reliability. It was rated the lowest among its competitors with the Expedition being about a 43 and the Sequoia being about a 76. If you're a cash customer looking for the lowest possible price, I would not recommend picking up a leftover 2023, even though they still have about a thousand and they're probably discounting them. They have about 1500 or so actually left on dealership lots, but the depreciation far outweighs the possible discount. Do not pull the trigger on the Tahoe until you watch this whole video. I'm going to show you if I think a smoking hot deal is actually possible right now. I'll run you through inventory, I'll tell you the invoice price, crunch some lease numbers, and finally, I'll examine the resale and the used market. Sound good? Hop in. In terms of inventory, Tahoe's are definitely up there with numbers. Expeditions, which I barely see any of, by the way, on the road, are taking the lead with Toyota having pretty much no Sequoias. Not too surprising with the Sequoia being the most reliable. So weird. So weird how Chevy has equally distributed production and inventory among all the trim levels. Percentage-wise, you can take your pick of any of the trims the Tahoe is offered in. Me personally, I'm perfectly fine with a simple RST. The Tahoe RST I've got picked out is 72465 the Tahoe has been known to have about a 5.5% markup. However, it's been a bit tough actually getting that figure ever since it was redesigned. More so, it's a little bit harder on the fancier Yukon and Escalade with those being marked up about $20,000 depending on which trim you get. Shoot for about $68,000 before taxes and fees on this $72,000 MSRP. It's true, they're not easy to negotiate, but definitely doable with considerable amount of 2023 is still there. Go after about 10% though, if you're actually looking at a 2023, you're definitely gonna need all that you can get, mainly because the five-year residual tanks 59% at best. If you ask me, just judging use listings at the moment, 59% is kind of a stretch. Surprisingly, nothing is available for Tahoe's at the moment. No promotional APR, no lease cash, nothing. The lease program is a paradox with these numbers, a 57% residual and a 0.00333 money factor or a 7.99% APR. Plugged in into the lease calculator, assuming we got it at invoice price, assuming we're paying the inception fees due at start, and assuming that you've hit like and subscribe, We'd be talking about $1,120 a month. Holy shit. That's not including your state sales tax. Not our lucky day, if you ask me. If you're curious what some of the other trims we'll lease out for, I've put some estimates that I think they'll go for in the summary text for this video in the description below. I'm giving this a D plus. A D plus with a 0 0.0033 money factor, they're pretty much sending us a message that they don't even want this thing back either. The five-year residual value, if you sell privately, is about $42,000. This will likely produce a trade-in value at the lowest at probably around 34 k Use these figures to gauge how much negative equity is possible in your situation when you plug it into a loan calculator. There's less than 900 three-year-old clean Tahoes in the U.S. right now when I searched car gurus. These all had less than 40,000 miles. An RST was about $55,000 and the LT about $41,000 based off of a great deal car gurus rating. The verdict? No. Like, not even, yeah, don't get it because, just no. Just a reminder, in the description below, you'll find a lot 
of valuable tools to help you in all areas of your car search. And if you found this information useful, please consider subscribing. Just click right here, please. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.